In this video, we're going to look at a few example problems applying the fundamental gas laws to different uh, gas processes, expansions, compressions, uh, different changes in gas samples. So let's look at first an application of Boyle's law. So this problem says an aerosol can contains 400 milliliters of compressed gas at 5.20 ATM. When all the gas is sprayed into a large plastic bag, that bag inflates to a volume of 2.14 liters. What is the pressure of gas in the plastic bag, right? So you have a bag that's inflating to a greater volume, right? So you're starting at 400 milliliters and you're expanding that volume greatly to 2.15 liters or 2.14 liters. And the question is asking you to calculate what's the change in the pressure? So we know from just looking at Boyle's law on its face, as the pressure increases or as, as the volume increases, the pressure should decrease. So this vast expansion of the volume should decrease our pressure. So we know that from the outset, but let's see how we can use Boyle's law to explicitly calculate that change in pressure. So first let's look at what we were given, right? So let's kind of just track out our givens here. Right, we were given the initial pressure and volume, right? So we have V1 is gonna be equal to 400 milliliters. We have P1, the initial pressure, that's gonna be equal to 5.20 ATM. And as far as the conditions once the bag inflates, we've been given the final volume that it'll be inflated to. Right, so we have V2 is going to be equal to 2.14 liters. So we're asked what is the pressure of the gas in the plastic bag after it inflates. That means we're solving for P2. Right, so this might be a good, good idea to list out all of these givens before you start the problem because it kind of gives you an idea of what you need to solve for, what you already have access to. Okay, so uh, first thing we want to notice here, right? Um, is that if we're going to use Boyle's law, we need all of our units to be the same. We have kind of a mismatch here with our uh, volume units. We got our initial volume in milliliters and we got our final volume in liters. So the first thing I wanna do is just convert the, uh, the initial volume to liters. Now you could do either or. You could convert the initial volume to liters or you could convert the final volume to milliliters. As long as they're the same, then you're good. But uh, what I'm gonna do is convert that initial volume to liters. So we got 400 milliliters, right? We want to convert that guy. So we know that in one liter, there's going to be a thousand milliliters. And so your milliliters cancel out there. That gives you a volume of 0 0.4 liters, right? So this is our V1 in liters, uh, 0 0.4 liters. So I'll put that here. 0 0.4 liters as our initial volume, right? Okay, so now let's apply Boyle's law. So just to remind you, Boyle's law tells us that P1, V1 should be equal to P2, V2, right? So the initial and final conditions of your gas, the product of the pressure and volume should be exactly equal. So uh, what we're trying to solve for is P2. So we wanna just do a little algebra here and isolate P2. So P2, would just be equal to P1, V1 over V2, right? You would just divide by the uh, final volume on both sides. Now we have everything we need to plug in. Our units should check out. We should get a final pressure in ATM. So uh, let's plug in our initial pressure. We got 5.20 ATM. That's our P1. And the initial volume is 0 0.4 liters. And we're going to put that over the final volume of the expansion, which is 2.14 liters. So um, making sure that our units check out, right? So the liters cancel out here, top and bottom. So we should end up with ATM as our final unit, which makes sense since we're solving for pressure, right? So uh, changing back to my initial color here. So P2 is going to be equal to 0 0.97 ATM when you crank out all the math. So does this make sense? With these laws, you can do a quick sanity check once you do these calculations, right? We expected the pressure to drop dramatically. 
because we expanded the volume dramatically, right? So it would make sense that we would go from a, vol a, a pressure of 5.2 ATM to a, a final pressure of 0.97 ATM when we expand the uh, or inflate this bag, right? So that's a, an application of Boyle's law. Let's look at an application of Charles's law. So for Charles's law, it says that, uh, or for this problem, it says that a balloon is filled to a volume of seven times 10 to the two milliliters, right? 700 milliliters at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The balloon is then cooled at a constant pressure to a temperature of one times 10 to the two Kelvin, right? So hundred Kelvin. What is the final volume of the balloon, right? So we want to calculate the final volume of this balloon. We've been given its initial volume and temperature um, so we want to be able to use that information to calculate its final volume. So again here, let's, let's kind of chart out what we've been given. Right, so we were given V1, the initial volume is going to be 7 times 10 to the 2 milliliters. The initial temperature is 20 degrees C. And the uh, final temperature, right, our T2, is going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the 2 Kelvin, right? So we were given this information. We're asked to solve for the final volume. So that means that we want to solve for V2, right? Now, again, here we have a bit of a mismatch with units, right, between our two temperatures. We have our T1 in Celsius and our T2 in Kelvin. So we want to fix that. Uh, what I'm going to do is convert the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin, right? So if we take this 20 degrees C, in order to convert to Kelvin, we just add 273.15 to that Celsius temperature. So that's going to give us 293.15 Kelvin, right? So that's going to be our T1. I'll put that here, right? This is equivalent to 293.15 Kelvin. Right. So um, so now we can utilize Charles's law now that we have made this um, this switch with our units. Everything should be consistent. So um, applying Charles's law here, Charles's law tells us that V1 over T1 should be equal to V2 over T2. And we know that we're trying to solve for T2. So if we isolate V2, which is just done by multiplying by T2 on both sides. Right, so we're gonna end up with T2 times V1 over T1. And so now all we have to do is just plug in and solve. So V2 is gonna be equal to our uh, final temperature, 100 Kelvin, times, put parentheses over all, both of these. So um, the final temperature, 100 Kelvin, the initial volume, which is 700 milliliters, and the final temperature, or the initial temperature, which is 293.15 Kelvin, right? So when you do the math there, we get a final volume of 238.79 milliliters, right? So that gives us our final volume, right? So again, doing a little bit of a sanity check here, Right, so we're starting at a volume of 700 milliliters um, and a temperature of 20 degrees C. We're cooling this balloon, so that means we're dropping the temperature. From Charles's law, we know that if we drop the temperature, the volume should drop right along with it, and that's exactly what we see play out when we do the calculation. Right, we get a much smaller volume uh, having cooled the balloon, so it makes sense. Okay, uh, last problem. So Avog an application of Avogadro's law. So this problem says if, if 27.1 grams of argon gas occupies a volume of 4.21 liters, what volume will 1.29 moles of neon occupy at the same temperature and pressure, right? So um, this one is a little bit different here, right? So uh, first of all, remember that I said that Avogadro's law was important for two reasons, right? It, it established that proportionality between volume and the number of moles but it also told us that it doesn't matter what the identity of this gas is, 
uh, we can apply this to any gas. So we can use these conditions for an argon gas to get insight about a neon gas, right? It doesn't really matter the identity here when they're being modeled by Avogadro's law. So let's see what we're given. Right, and for this case, I'll use the, the conditions given for argon as the initial, the, the V1 and, uh, and N1, and the conditions for neon as V2 and N2. Right, so we're given V1, right? V1 is given to us as 4.21 liters, right? Now, N1 uh, is not explicitly given to us, right? The number of moles of argon is, we can calculate it, but it's given to us as a mass. So let's actually convert that mass that we were given to a number of moles so that we can uh, plug that guy in, right? So we have 27.1 grams of argon gas that's given to us. And the molar mass for argon, for every one mole of argon, we have 39.95 grams of argon. And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.68 moles of argon, right? So we can plug that guy in here as our N1. So we weren't given that, in, that number of moles explicitly, but we were given the mass, and we know we can use that to get the number of moles. So we can plug that in here, 0 0.68 moles of argon, right? And we're also given the, we're, we're given the number of moles of neon. So we're given N2, which is equal to 1.29 moles of neon. Now what we're asked is how much volume will this occupy? So we're asked to solve for V2, right? So uh, let's use Avogadro's law to solve. So we know that from Avogadro's law, V1 over N1 is going to be equal to V2 over N2. Again here, we're looking for the final volume. So we're isolating V2. So that's going to be N2 times V1 over N1. And so if we plug everything in here, right, our final number of moles is going to be 1.29 moles. Our initial volume was 4.21 liters. And the initial number of moles for, for our argon gas was 0 0.68 moles, right? Number of moles is going to cancel out. When you get that final number, it should be 7.99 liters for the final volume. Okay, again here, quick sanity check, right? We're increasing the number of moles, right? So we're going from 0.68 to 1.2. So we see that the volume increases accordingly, right? According to Avogadro's law, right? You increase the number of moles, you increase the volume, right? Okay, so this gives us um, a few practical applications of the fundamental laws that we learned in the previous video. In the next video, we'll use these fundamental laws as a bedrock to get a fundamental gas equation, right? A unifying equation that, that puts together all of these properties into one, right? And that's called the ideal gas law. We'll look at that in the next video.